Hey everybody, it's February 14th and you know what that means. Season four, episode 10 of Attack on Titan, yes! Anyways, speaking of love, yes, that's my transition. What better way to talk about love than by making it coldly impersonal and scientific? Woo, let's go. So what is love? Like what is love actually? Well, clearly stated, love is chemistry, not like, Hey babe, I think we have chemistry. I mean like actual chemicals. Love is drugs and we're all just junkies. According to a team of scientists at Rutgers University, romantic love can be broken down into three categories, lust, attraction, and attachment. Each category is controlled by its own set of hormones stemming from the brain. So I am using the terms lust, attraction, and attachment to describe three different things that can overlap, but do not necessarily go hand in hand. So what are they? Lust is the desire for sexual gratification, or as it's more widely known, wanting to f It stems from the primordial need to reproduce and perpetuate the terrible human species. The chemicals that play a role in creating lust are testosterone and estrogen, which are produced by the sex organs, the ovaries and the testes, upon stimulation from the hypothalamus. So what does lust feel like? You know what lust feels like, or maybe you don't, nerd. Lust is when your private parts feel excited. <laughs> Gross! Side effects of being in lust with someone may include unwanted tents, damp linens, and bad decisions. I wouldn't know, and that's also the worst sentence I've ever said. Attraction is a related but totally distinct phenomenon. Attraction is having a crush on someone, and it involves your brain's reward pathways. Attraction is characterized by a boost of dopamine, a boost of norepinephrine and cortisol, and a reduction in serotonin. Dopamine is the cool kid of the neurotransmitters that everybody knows about. Like, you know, it's the chemical that gets released when we do something that feels good, like eat chocolate, do cocaine, or have sex which is not the same as lust. Lust is wanting to have sex with somebody. Dopamine is released after or during, you know what? Anyways, norepinephrine and cortisol are stress hormones. Yeah, the same hormones responsible for the fight or flight response. So having a crush on someone is comparable to being chased by a bear and or doing hard drugs. Getting chased by a bear while doing hard drugs. Maybe the bear isn't real because you're high off the hard drugs. Serotonin, which gets suppressed, is a hormone that affects our mood and appetite, which can help explain why some people fall so hard in love that they're unable to even eat or sleep. Like how dramatic. Cortisol has also been shown to reduce immune function. So the term lovesick might actually be a little bit more literal than you may have thought. But some of you already knew that. <laughs> losers, lovesick losers. So in attraction, this combination of pleasure and stress makes you feel giddy, energetic, infatuated, and even euphoric. So how do you know if you're in attraction with a person? Well, I think the biggest indicator that you're attracted to somebody is getting that neurotic, giddy feeling in response to non-sexual interactions. So like getting a text from that person and smiling like an idiot, or having your heart race when you see that they liked your photo. <laughs> Side effects of being in attraction may include, but are not limited to, butterflies in your stomach, mild hyperventilation, sweaty armpits, suddenly becoming stupid, like really stupid, like social intelligence has dropped to negative 500 when your subject of attraction is around. And let me be crystal clear, we can certainly lust for someone that we're attracted to and vice versa, but one can definitely also happen without the other. The last neurochemical category for love is attachment. Attachment is the predominant factor in long-term romantic relationships, and it's a feeling that extends to familial and platonic relationships as well. The two hormones involved in attachment are oxytocin and vasopressin, which, like dopamine, are both made in the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. <laughs> what am I doing? Oxytocin is responsible for bonding and trust. And you might have heard of it before because it's also widely known as the cuddle hormone. <laughs> it's the hormone that gets released when you do things like give someone a hug or pet a dog. But oxytocin also gets released in large quantities during sex, childbirth, and breastfeeding, which are all precursors to bonding. In the romantic context, oxytocin is very important for forming a pair bond with someone. Vasopressin has been shown to have a similar effect in males. Vasopressin levels increase after 
after mating. And it not only helps males form a bond with their partner, but it also produces selective aggressive tendencies towards others in order to protect that bond. And the studies that helped scientists learn all this are pretty interesting. For example, a study done by Cosfeld demonstrated that a nasal spray with oxytocin drastically increased the levels of trust in people playing a money game even towards total strangers. And in order to better understand vasopressin, scientists studied prairie voles. And I know you're probably thinking, what the f is a prairie vole? This is a prairie vole. Isn't it cute? The prairie vole is known to be socially monogamous and express vasopressin like humans do. But they also have a promiscuous cousin called meadow voles. Prairie voles typically pair for life, whereas meadow voles are horny little slut bags. So get this. Scientists compared their brains and found that meadow voles have way fewer vasopressin receptors than their monogamous cousins. So the scientists injected the slutty voles with a virus that contained genetic instructions to grow more vasopressin receptors, and boom! The meadow voles that got injected with the virus actually changed their ways and fixated on a single partner that they wanted to pair with. They refused to pair with any other voles, even when tempted. And they even developed aggressive tendencies towards voles that might come in the way of their pairing. Now I know a bunch of people are probably watching like, how do I get my hands on that injection? <laughs> no. Interestingly enough, the opposite was also shown to be true. When scientists inhibited levels of oxytocin and vasopressin in prairie voles, they no longer showed any particular interest in a single partner. In other words, they became huge sluts. So to summarize attachment, oxytocin is the happy, I trust you and I wanna be with you hormone, and vasopressin is the, this is mine, and no one else can have it, and I don't want anyone else hormone. And based on this research, one just has to wonder, are polyamory and monogamy genetic? Like do people who want to sleep with everybody have less vasopressin receptors than others? Can we potentially inject monogamy into people or turn people poly like scientists did with meadow and prairie voles? So anyways, that is the chemistry of love. I've always told people that you don't get to choose who you have a crush on and science has proved me right. You can't command your hypothalamus to make you giddy over someone, and you can't just turn on lust over just anybody. You can, however, largely choose who you bond with because the attachment hormones are released in response to certain types of interactions, like I said before. But when it comes to lust and attraction, our brains and sex organs bombard us with these hormones on their own accord. Gay or straight or pan or ace, we don't really get to choose when these hormones are set on or off. and. There's a lot more to say regarding the science behind homosexuality, but I decided that would have to be its whole other video. Just know, it's not a choice. You were born this way, baby, and science confirms. Moving along. So anyways, all this science probably leaves you with questions. Like, does this mean that love can actually be quantified? If you could potentially put bonding in a nasal spray and monogamy in an injection, does that mean that love really is just drugs? And do I really not have any control over this at all? Well, once again, science has the answer. And the answer is no. And that's because in addition to the hypothalamus and brainstem that release chemicals that make us feel things and our sex organs that make us feel things, humans also have this incredible section of our brain called the prefrontal cortex. Dun, dun, dun. The prefrontal cortex contributes to a wide variety of executive functions that include focusing, actually thinking through decisions, anticipating consequences, impulse control, long-term planning, and coordinating complex behaviors. And you're probably like, Lorena, why are you telling me this? Listen, essentially, the prefrontal cortex is your override button. You can't really control who you're attracted to or lust over, but you can pump the brakes on romantic thoughts and actions with logical thinking. Like, have you ever had a big fat crush on someone that you just knew was bad for you? Of course you have. We all have. I'm not projecting, you're projecting. But despite our hearts racing and the butterflies in our stomach, our prefrontal cortex allows us to rationally assess our situation and imagine the future consequences of our current actions. So you're most likely going to be attracted to and lust over many people in your life, but with your uniquely human cognitive capabilities, you will be able to select the person that's best for you based not just on feelings, but on information. Information about who they are, what they like, and how compatible you're probably going to be when the infatuation hormones sizzle out. 
The ideal partner, in my opinion, is the person that you're attracted to, lust for, and can be best friends with. If you find someone that ticks all of those boxes, then man, you've hit the gold mine. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I wish you all the best of luck this Valentine's Day. God knows we all need it, if God were real. So I'm actually gonna end this with a too long didn't read. So too long didn't read for the entire video, Hormones play a huge role in the feelings we associate with love and we generally don't have control over those, but we have control over our minds and with that, we can choose the best person for us in the end. Woo, did it. Two lovers, forbidden from one another. A war divides their people. And a mountain divides them apart And they found a way to be together And I forgot the next part, but then it goes Secret tunnel, secret tunnel Through the mountain Secret, 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 secret tunnel Yeah